בחודש השביעי, באחד לחודש, in the seventh month, on the first of the month, this is what we call Aleph Tishrei, Yelochem Shaboson, it's a day that you must refrain from creative activity. We'll see, this is only activity which is not food related. This is, it has the status of a Yom Tif. It's Shabbos, it means there's only one level of refrain. It's not a double level of refrain. Yom Kippur, it's a Shabbos Shabbos. Not only are you not permitted to create activity which has to do with work, which is unrelated to food related activities, even food related activities are not permitted on Yom Kippur. But Rosh Hashanah, it's a festival, although it's not one of the three festivals, Shabbos, only one refrain is necessary which is creative activity, which is not food-related. Zichron Shua. It's the remembrance of the blast. Mikra Kodesh. It's an assembly of Kedusha, of sanctity. Now, it's interesting. Today, we refer to the Jewish months. They're referred to by name. Nisan is the month which we celebrate Zman Chayrusenu, Pesach, the time of our freedom. Every month is referred to in the Torah by number. Nisan is referred to as Chodesh HaRishon. And every month subsequently is referred by number. So now we're holding Tishrei is the seventh month. The Torah refers to the months by number. However, today we refer to the months by name. Nisan, Tishrei, Sivan is Zman Matan Torah Senu, the month that the Torah was given to us. Why, why the change? Why does the Torah refer to it by number? And we refer to it by name. So there's a Ramban. The Ramban explains that until we left Bovil, or until Bovil, we went to exile, the months were referred to by number. After Bovil, when we came back for this rebuilding, the Sekhmes Amigdosh, the Novi, the prophet says, the months will no longer be referred to by number. But why do we refer to by number? What was the mo most significant moment in terms of the transition from one status to the next? That's when we left Egypt. Egypt is Chodesh HaRishon. If you want to know when the most profound moment in the history and the development and the relevance of spirituality to the Jewish people that the things began to evolve, the climax, that it started in Nisan. That's, that's Chodesh HaRishon. That's the first month. First month when we left Egypt, we were slaves, in the physical sense, in the spiritual sense, and the ascent was a 49-day ascent till we reached the 50th day, which is the third month, that's Chodesh HaShlishi, that's Sivan, this is when God gave us the Torah. And this is what we've taken to be the chosen people. However, after Golos Bovil, the exile of Bovil, it's no longer... Chodesh Rishon, it's referred to, we, ref, we refer to it as Chodesh Nisan. The month of Shavuos is referred to as Chodesh Sivan. And the month of, the seventh month is referred to as Tishrei. These are Babylonian, Persian combination. The, these are the labels which we put on these months, which also have significance. But the Torah only refers to everything, begins with Chodesh Rishon, that's when we went the Abdus Lecherus, from slavery to freedom. Pidison be Savodin, God redeemed us from the house of slavery. So Hashem says to Moshe, speak to the Bnei Israel, Bechodesh Ashvi, the seventh month. Bechod Lechodesh, and this is Rosh Hashanah. The seventh month, even though we, the world was created in Tishrei, 
But nevertheless, it's referred to the seventh month because the value is not when it was created in the physical sense, rather when we began the ascent to become Odom. What did we become Odom? Atem Kurim Odom. We assume the role of Odom, which initially was the role of Adam, in terms of his potential. It began when we left Egypt and we became the Odom, the Odom, with, in the fullest sense that happened when we received the Torah at Sinai. That's when we had this metamorphosis in terms of our souls. It took on a whole different reality of Neshama. As we mentioned, now we need Tarot Mitzvahs. We need 240 positive commandments to advance our souls. And you need 365 negative commandments to maintain the order of the soul that it should not be disrupted in terms of what it is, what we're endowed with. So therefore it's referred to as Chodesh HaRishon, climaxing in terms of the actual development, this happened at Shuz, Chodesh HaShlishi. So the first of the seventh month, the first of the month, Shabboson Zichron Shua. It is a remembrance of the blast. Firstly, why is it referred to as Zichron Shua? It's a remembrance of the blast. It's the day of the blast. We actually blow the shofar. It's Yom Shua. And the Torah refers to Rosh Hashanah in two, two ways. In one context, we'll see the Torah refers to as Yom Shua. It's the day of the blast. Shua is the sound which is emitted from the ram's horn. And here, it refers to it as Zichro Shua, the remembrance of the blast. So the Gemara explains that there are times, although it's Rosh Hashanah, although there's an obligation to blow the shofar, however, because it's Shabbos, and there's a concern that if a person is not fully proficient and adept in blowing the shofar, due to his enthusiasm and sense of obligation, Without thinking, he may take that shofar and transport it in public domain to take it to a chocham, a person who's able to teach him, and it'll be a violation of Shabbos, transporting something four cubits in public domain. Therefore, rabbinically, there's a rabbinic fence, we don't blow the shofar, when Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, for that reason. It's rabbinical. But the Gemara says, when it says Yom Trua, the day of the blast, that's when Rosh Hashanah is during the weekday. We actually blow the shofar. But when it falls out on Shabbos, it's only Zichr and Shua. We only say the verses. Because we know in the Musaf, that's when we blow the shofar. Each set of blasts is accompanied with ten psukim. The psukim of Zichronos, Malchios, psukim of kingship. Zichro, shofros and Zichronos. Remembrances and Psukim which refer to the shofar. So when Rosh Hashanah falls on the Shabbos, we only say the Psukim in Musaf, it's not accompanied with the blowing of the shofar. So Zichron and Shrua is remembrance of the blast where Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos. We don't blow the shofar because there's a concern. You may transport the shofar four cubits in public domain. Yom Shrua, the day when you actually blow the shofar, that's during the weekday. So the obvious question is, if the only reason why we don't blow the shofar when it falls out on Shabbos is because there's a concern you may violate the Shabbos, but that's only a rabbinic fence. It's not a Torah law. I mean, seemingly from the, what the Gemara answers, how it reconciles the two statements, it seems to me it's a Torah law that you should not blow the shofar when a shofar falls out on Shabbos. But as the Gemara explains it, it's as for the same reason we don't take the lulav when... The first day of Sukkot is a Shabbos, because there's a concern you may take the four species to be taught how to wave the lulav. When, Rosh, when Purim falls out on Shabbos, which is possible in Yerushalayim, if you, have Pur, if you have Purim on Friday in a city which is not a walled city from the time of Yeshua bin Nun, did not have a wall, we blow the shofar on the 14th. But if you are in a city which had a wall when Yeshua bin Nun conquered Canaan, you blow the shofar on the 15th. So if in the unwalled city, you blow it on the 14th, which is Friday, so you blow the, sh you read the Megillah on Shabbos, the Mar says no, because there's a concern 
that the reader of the Megillah may not be adept at reading the Megillah, and he may, through his sense of obligation, transport in public domain. So again, in that situation, we don't read the Megillah. On Shabbos, in Yushalayim, even Yushalayim, which is a walled city from Yeshua ben Nun, they read the Megillah on Friday, not on Shabbos for that reason. So Megillah, they say, it's a rabbinic obligation, reading the Megillah. But Shofar, Shofar is, a to- is what? Is a Torah obligation. And yet the Gemara reconciles the two psukim, the two references that it's speaking where Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos. So the answer is, it's a mnemonic, it's what we call asmachto. Asmachto. Very often you find rabbinic laws, rabbinic fences, chazal, they find the word, the way the Torah expresses itself as an allusion, it alludes to something, but they're using only as a mnemonic. But what does that mean, they use it as mnemonic? I'll give you an example. David HaMelech, in the time of King David, there was a plague, and he was, after he had counted the Jewish people, because he wanted to quantify, to know the exact number, there was a plague. So David was told by Hashem, David was a prophet, and he understood that the way they're able to correct the, the issue, a Jew should say, Mea brachos b'chol yom. A hundred brachos every day. That's where it began. That's when they originally legislated that every Jew should say, it's not an obligation, but it's suggested and it's very beneficial that a Jew should say a hundred brachos every day. And the Gemara, the Yushalmi cites an allusion to this. Because Moshe Rabbeinu says to Klaus Yisrael, Mo Hashem imoch. What is God asking of you? So the Yushalmi says, it should not be read Mo, which means what? But rather Meo. What is God asking of you? Meo. A hundred. To say a hundred brachos every day. And when you say those hundred brachos every day, that'll be a correction. And therefore, the plague will cease and that will provide prote- protection for the Jewish people. So the Mo should be read Meo, which means a hundred. So that's what, that's not smachto. To remember that it's a hundred, they took the word more and they said it should not be read more, but it should be read mayo, because it has a, a similar sound. So, but over here it says zichron. Zichron means it's remembrance of the blast. So why does the Torah here refer to it as zichron, trua, rather not as yom trua? So there's a famous, very fundamental ritva. Ritva is one of the early commentators on Rosh Hashanah. He explains it this way. You know, there's an expression, you red flag something. You red flag it. There's certain situations where Chazal, because of their own concerns, they came up with a concept that unless we create a fence, since a person is vulnerable or susceptible to this lack of clarity, we have to set, create a fence. We have to legislate a fence. So it all begins with them. They understand the nature of a person, they create fences. The times where the Torah is alluding that this situation, there is a problem. So it's suggesting that you should be on the lookout that since man is vulnerable because he may transport the chauffeur Dalin Amos and Rosh Hashanah due to the level of obligation Therefore, it's up to you to legislate it. Chazal were endowed with the power. They legislate fences. But how do they know this is a situation we have to be concerned? By the Torah writing, Zichron Shua, that there's a day with it, which is a remembrance of the plants, it's allusion, it's alluding to the fact that there is a problem there. The Torah is red flagging the day that it's a day that you have to be concerned. But it's up to Chazal, to the rabbis, to promulgate, to legislate, that fence, whenever they choose, it should be legislated. So Zichr and Shua, the Torah saying Zichr, it's a remembrance of the blast. At Sinai, they blew the shofar even on Shabbos. However, by writing Zichr, the Torah is red flagging the day that it's a time that whenever they see that there's a problem, that's the time to legislate and create that rabbinic fence because there is a strong reason to be concerned people will violate the Shabbos for the sake of blowing of the shofar. That's the famous ritva. That's the ritva. Where do we find something similar? And I mentioned this. We find, the Gemara tells us there's a concept 
Kohanim's reason that Kohanim do things with alacrity. The, just the, the drive, the nature, the mental and chem, chemistry of a Kohen is different than other tribes. And, and therefore, regarding Kohanim, their service, Chazal did not legislate certain fences because they do things with alacrity. They do things with a meticulousness. How do we know this? She'd say, it's their evaluation of the psyche and the personality of the Kohen. There's a certain intensity, there's a certain drive. So Ramban says, no, we find the Chumash is divided into five books. The closing sefer of Chumash is called Dvarim. Dvarim is referred to as Mishnah Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu passes away. So in Mishnah Torah, in the fifth book, he reviews many of the mitzvos which are stated in the first Chumashim. However, Torah's Kohanim, which are the laws which pertain to the Kohanim and Korbanos, those laws are not repeated in Dvarim. So Ramban asks, why? So the Ramban answers, the reason why you have to repeat something is because initially the people don't have the clarity or the focus, and therefore it has to be repeated. And Moshe Rain, once he passes away, that source is no longer available, that direct connection. Therefore, Moshe repeats all the mitzvahs of the Torah in Sefer Dvarim, the book of Dvarim. However, Kohanim, because there's reason, because they have this persona, they have this different psyche of doing things differently, it's not necessarily repeated for them. The Kohanim, you don't have to repeat. Therefore, we find in Sefer Dvarim that the laws pertaining to their law, their personal laws and laws of Karbanos are not repeated again in Sefer Dvarim. So how did Chazal, that's the Ramban. So the takeaway is for us to understand, so how did Chazal know to assess that the Kohen is different than all other Jews of all other tribes? It's obvious because if the Torah doesn't repeat the laws which pertain to the Kohen, the Karbanos, evidently it's not necessarily repeated. Why not? The answer is because Kohen is reason. Hey. So the Torah is alluding to this fact. That's how the Chazal extrapolated it from the Torah. Identically here, Zichr and Trua, although it's a rabbinic fence, if a shirt falls on Shabbos, but the Torah, by saying that word, it's a remembrance, which means Chazal, the Torah is suggesting and alluding that there's an issue, a concern, and whenever they choose and they feel it's necessary to legislate that fence, they should actually do it at that time. Therefore, that's Zichr and Trua. So the, the Ritva writes, and anybody who doesn't believe that this is the principle of asmachto, where Chazal, they use the word as a, the Torah is red flagging it to indicate that there is an issue. These are the words of Ritva. Elo chelek betoros Moshe Rabbeinu. He has no share in the Torah of Moshe, meaning it's considered a heretical statement. If you reject this concept, not accepting that this is the fact of asmachto, when Chazal use a word which alludes it's not just a mnemonic, but rather it's the, the reason why they realize there's the issue and there's a vulnerability, and that's the reason why they legislated the fence in that particular situation.